Всех приветствуем. We welcome everyone. Good afternoon. Dear friends, we congratulate all of you for joining this international online seminar. Today, we are going to talk about stanza 3, shloka 11. It is a full of variety in terms of its volume. Of course, it is uh, bigger than other stanzas, and we'll try to follow all the thoughts that will be voiced today by our dear speakers. It's uh, February the 24th, 2024. This is the unique repetition of 24. It's a rare case, and we are happy to be in these unique energies together with you here. 24 is the figure that gives start to a new cycle. It's the cycle of Maha Manvantara. It can be manifested in a smaller uh, circle of evolution. And the 24th of February is reflected in this year, which increases the concentration of energy. And of course, we'll be very happy together with you to try to be within this flow together and try to identify the key thoughts that are important for the understanding of the stanza. It's an important link that gives us the uh, idea of the sequence. It's important. What is this whole work about? This creative work always gives us uh, uh, new ideas, new understandings. It is happening only when we have the internal and the external tension. Each participant of the seminar goes through these uh, points of tension and to, and for that, we also need a particular energy that goes through the external uh, obstacles. This concentration, this tension enables this uh, creative work to happen and through understanding our psychic energy, we can understand the thought and follow the thought today's uh, thought that our speakers will present. They will present the unique material of uh, Shloka uh, 11, stanza 3, and we're moving uh, uh, closer to the end of uh, the stanza, and the closer we get to that, but to that, the more ether uh, uh, is uh, concentrated. This is like a flywheel that gives uh, impetus to the movement of energies based on our individual understanding, and it contributes to this understanding when we try when we begin to understand fully the thought and for us all to be within this ether field which is consequential in which there are there is the psychic energy pulsing it contributes to our understanding to the concentration and to the necessary attention so we congratulate everyone who was able to join us today, who was able to go through this field to uh, find their psychic energy, their aspiration. And today we'll try to connect the 24th of February and 2024, these tw uh, two numbers, 24, so that there will be the movement of all the courses, 24 plus 24 equals 48, and 48, as we know, is the flow based on the 12. It's the exchange of energies. And this is the ideal, the perfect exchange of energies, 24 and 24. We'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll delve into this uh, creative work so that each of us will improve the understanding of this material and be 
for able to apply it in our practical life. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, the material is presented by a psychologist, by uh, Mr. Yare, uh, a head of the School of Theosophy, Sergei Kolganov, PhD professor of the Department of Philosophy of the Moscow Aviation uh, Institute, Kishore Angole, Theosophical Society of India, Guntur, India. And uh, these are the speakers for today, and we'll try today to identify the action of the psychic energy so that today's thought would be understandable for everyone. We have simultaneous interpreting today by Ksenia Persova and Polina Romancheva. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for delving into this material, for uh, trying to be as clear as possible for our English-speaking uh, partners and trying to explain these complicated notions we're working with. And thank you for doing that in a simple way. And we uh, can follow this uh, psychic energy that enables us to follow the thought and that contributes to this work. So let's delve today into this unusual day, the 24th of February, 2024. And uh, we want this uh, us to be in one rhythm so that it will be in line with the powers of our heart energy, the cosmos, uh, the universe, and the sun. And only then, within this unified rhythm, uh, we'll see the results that we are all uh, aspiring for. We are all aspiring for the unity so that this divisive stage would be gone through with dignity. And for that, we need the knowledge. We need to understand how this unity is created. Today, within Shloka 11, we'll try to get everything together. And now I give the floor to the psychologist, to the head of the School of Theosophy of the City of Moscow. Mr. Yari, I give you the floor. Hello. So, of course, we'll start with the thought of the day given by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky in the Pearl of the East. And the most important the thing is it only fake new. And it's important to take into account this aspect because it's essential for our everyday meditation. And the main question here is how do we learn to create? How do we learn how to think? And according to this aspect, the one who can think, he can unveil his true, the ideas through ident identity, which gives us the opportunity today, you know, taking into account the combination of hiddenness, of energies, environments and rays, of the vectors of space, they will unveil themselves to us and how we should act accordingly, how we need to improve our life, how can we create an atmosphere, how can we better our living conditions or the conditions for the harmony and peace, the peace between the spirit and the body. And uh, the 11th stanza Dian, that we are going to talk about today is what is manifested, what is reflected in the ideal, in its purity and absolute. The combination of Nidanas will be discussed once we start to meditate in accordance with the thought of the day. And the thought of the day is hatred is never quenched by hatred. Because hatred ceases by showing love. This is an old rule. Eye for an eye doesn't work. It's an animalistic passionate nature, a crude nature that uh, was necessary, as Darwin said, 
you know, the evolutionary process, the uh, combat for survival. So this is just the lower nature. But once we have reached a new era, a new, the fifth race, the fifth sub race that goes into the sex race of the sixth humanity. So for us, the aspect is something that needs to be a conscious action. And the combinations of Vedanas will help us in this. They are inscribed within the will. So today we have the ear of the Aquarius. The hierophant of the sector is the blue monkey, which tells us that the beauty is very important, the feeling of beauty. And your ability to send this beauty makes you makes you able to realize your wisdom. In this sector of the Aquarius, in this era, he will need powers or needles that will, those are the fire snakes, the yellow horse, the yellow goat, the white monkey and the white rooster. Those five main needles that were born by the feeling of beauty. So, so then your consciousness will be pure, will be knowledgeable, just. The gold represents love, so the love will manifest itself and combat everything. And then the feeling of beauty, the sense of beauty will be condensed in the white monkey and resonate within the person. It will resonate with the voice of uh, the voiceless or the higher you, the higher identity and the merge will happen. So the communication, the harmony in this aspect will happen. And this tells us that the human nature will become more spiritual. The astral body will ascend to a new level of desires. So in those fires that are innate in those five uh, aspects, uh, in those five uh, abilities to conceive this world, your sense of smell, your, your touch, your sense of hearing and so on, your uh, vision, all of these things will become more subtle and then you will be able to see the clear light or the reality as it is. Because in this case, when the white rooster resonates within you, you will hear the voice of the silence. And so in other words, you will feel intuitively the light of the unity or the light of the spiritual sun. So this needs to happen because the sixth race is the Buddhi race and we need to awaken the element of the germ of the potential that will be within us will reveal itself as the higher purpose of our evolution. And this is the evolutional flow that humanity needs to go into. The next Nidana is the century of the white dragon. It's beneath the ray of the Saturn, the green ray, which is a synthetic ray. But of course, the dragon itself, it speaks about the synthetic understanding of the world. It's not just the material world, but the merge between the fin, the fire world. And this will be facilitated by the cycle of time, by this period of change, because this is where we will 
see all of this. So this divergence will happen to, depending on your ability to think or your inability to think. And the sixth doctrine and the teachings of Mahat in the 1918. They gave us this great impulse of the spiritual sun, the impulse or the pulse of life of the atom or which is within us, which is the consciousness. And if we talk about animals, the atoms of the nervous system, if we talk about the, about plants, the atoms of uh, their cells, and uh, as a result, we have the transformation of our appearance, of our form, our to form, because it will live and understand this world from the position of its consciousness, which is very important because it will be conceived. It will conceive the world at a higher energy, at a higher vibration, which had its impulse in 1918. And everybody was touched by this energy. The whole world was touched by it. And it's the afterlife essence in the world that goes into harmonic state and up to the nirvanic state. So we can see that the vibration of Mirmanakaya, so of the body, has touched everything, the whole nature, every living being. And the answer 3, Shloka 11, is what unveils this, but I will, you know, I'm giving just you a heads up on what we're going to talk about later. It will come as a result of the first stanza, 11 shlokas of this, the impulse that we perceive as a new step of the human evolution, of the human consciousness, and how it's developed, and the renewed form, because this is a drop this drop, this new step is ready for us to be understood. So the ethereal body needs to vibrate and the new clarity in accordance with the cosmic magnet, the central figure, which is in the center of the wheel of Kala Chakra. And this is the six-fold star which symbolizes the power of nature. So the nature vibrates. The nature of what? Of the thinker. And if we look at the center of the star, we see the green energy, which stands for the ability of the synthetic understanding by all our organs of perception, which are on the high realm of desires, and the desires are based on, first of all, on the common good, on the sense of love, and then we have the capability to follow orders, because it's high time for the humanity to follow the orders. But of course, laziness is what's stopping the humanity, because it's the only thing that can stop someone from learning how to think for themselves. So the great division that happens in the white dragon in this century is what's happening. And the year of the blue dragon, it promotes even bigger powers, the, the ability to sense beauty and to develop your ability to think. And you need to have love in your heart and to love the world of art. Because art is what elevates your mastery. And your ability to master is what represents your quality of life. So the blue dragon in the ray of Mars is the fire energy, which first of all promotes or encourages 
the spark of our spirit to ignite with all the 49 fires which will manifest themselves in the 49 fire but this all depends on the individuality of people because you need to develop your individual ability of your higher ego you know, do you understand because it's the high time for us to be ready and for the people who carry the idea of common good and they appear or manifest themselves because they have heard the calling and, and the avatars appear the avatars who are able to follow orders to better themselves and to come to the realization that helps people to understand the whole world so the garment of my my avakaya is what helps a person to achieve the avatar so this is an interesting connection because in this year we all can become avatars if we discard our laziness because we have the spark of the spirit within us and it's promoted by the ray of mars and the month is of the blue taurus which speaks about the realization of the thought process because what is the, the essence of the self-realization is that you need to acknowledge your own inability to think your ignorance your ignorance of the fire world so that you don't see it even and by realizing yourself at the material world you can sometimes feel that the thin world is fleeting and you need to acknowledge that and then the vector will change and the levitation or light thoughts the ability to think freely will come to you so the blue Taurus it stands for it represents the whole month so we have the ability to realize realize ourselves within this whole month the week is of the black dog it's within the synthetic ray of the satyr which shows us that the personality is that has already mastered the ability to think freely so their personality is solid and the synthetic condition or synthetic characteristic or the ability to think synthetically is what this black dog gives us and of course we know that this is an akashic energy the black dog and it has the male principle and the male principle is uh, narayana that uh, flies above the water so take this higher being within a person that has understood how to think freely so at this time he becomes similar with the narayan spirit that flies above the water because it creates the ability to manifest or to form his higher his higher thinking process and the day is of the blue horse which tells us that each higher shakti the power of will that makes us you know as the muscles of our consciousness which reside in our brain in our brain we have muscles that create this correlation of electricity by igniting one sector or another the different combinations of brain sectors so different connections between the thought process to form words so this is what 
is synthetically revealed in the nature of our consciousness, of our consciousness of a thinker. And justice, represented by the horse, once again, is a male principle. It's the same aspect of Narayana, because the God or the spirit Narayana is what we need to identify with the mass of powerful essences that promote building, creating so this characteristic. So this is the day at hand. And of course, I have almost finished talking about uh, uh, the ray of light that uh, goes through electricity and that promotes the creation of different forms of life the carriers of this thinker. It's really important here because fire is the creative energy and light is an aspect of the Buddha nature, the characteristic of clarity. And mind, it has in itself all the things that are clearly manifested. And today you have the opportunity so that we don't go on the outer edge of the will. Let us go into the center of the will of the teaching and talk about the synthesis of the teachings. So we will talk about the 11th shloka, stanza free. Thank you. Thank you so much for the clarity, for providing us clarity. And it just uh, occurred to me that this major thought on uh, Stanza Zian uh, Shloka 11 study is that in, in Shloka 9 we talked about the place uh, where this uh, psychic energy is preserved. Shloka 10 is the state of this preserved energy and it's ready to give its love. And uh, its 11th state manifests uh, the ectoplasma itself, the matter of ectoplasma. In the psychic energy, there's uh, the feeling of knowledge, the psychic energy, uh, this uh, inspiration is there, but uh, it's not just remaining there. It manifests the nuances of the psychic, of the moral nature of human beings and their improvement through the uh, where the lights uh, they should go through ectoplasma. Uh, these spark, uh, sparks uh, go through ectoplasma. And uh, this uh, story about 49 fires tells us that the 49th one is the form. Each human being is the 49th fire or the form of 48, 24 and 24 combine 48 fires are the symbol of this number and 49 manifest this spark within each individual within each one's consciousness within each one's thought individually what is the path of this matter uh, of the substance in ectoplasma this uh, substance is responsible for being the middle between the thin of plane of existence and uh, the creature and the most important thought that will trace in this speaker's presentations is that there is the substance of ectoplasma which gives great sparks within ourselves these are 11 similar synthetic rays that open up the face, so to say, of this Brahma, they identify the opportunity. As uh, Vladimir Vasilevich has said, each of us has the opportunity to become this link, this pure conductor between the thin existent, existence uh, and uh, uh, the earth existence. We are happy to see among our presenters, our esteemed speaker, Mr. Kolganov, a PhD in philosophy, 
uh, philosophy uh, department uh, professor of the Moscow Aviation Institute. He'll present uh, the scientific research of Shloka 11, stanza 3, state. Sergei, we're happy to see you. Thank you so much for being able to join us. We're all ears. I wish the participants uh, of this seminar all the best. Hello. In the book, Commentaries to the Secret Doctrine by Blavatsky in the explanations to Shloka 11 of stanza 3, there is a statement. One of the tasks of the secret doctrine is to prove that the notion of the planets cannot be satisfactory, uh, satisfactorily explained only by the theory of gravitation. There is a force acting on matter besides the force acting in matter. End of quotation. First, let us con consider in what direction the scientific, uh, the scientific theories of the universe evolution developed in the 20th century. Cosmology studies the most general properties of the entire region of space covered by observation. We call it the meta galaxy. Our knowledge of the meta galaxy is limited by the observation horizon. This horizon is defined by the fact that the speed of light is not instantaneous. Hence, we can only observe the regions of the universe from where light managed to reach us by now. In doing so, we do not see objects in their current state, but in the state they were in when the light was emitted. The event horizon is local to each observer. The age of the universe is 13.8 billion light years. It's not the age, but an observational horizon. When Einstein was working on his general theory of relativity, the scientists saw the universe in a different way. The meta galaxy and its expansion had not yet been discovered, so Einstein relied on the ideas of a stationary universe that is a uniformly filled with galaxies and closed in on itself finite in space and does not change over time. The only person who believed in the correctness of the conclusions of the general theory of relativity as applied to cosmological problems in 1922 was the young Soviet physicist Friedman. Already in the early 20s, Friedman mastered the new theory of Einstein, but he was also the first who resolved the most difficult part of it the cosmological problem who sacrificed the millennia-old Western philosophical tradition of presenting the world as immutable and stable in the name of the slenderness of theory. In 1922, he came to the fundamental conclusion, after reanalyzing a complex system of 10 world equations, that relativistic theory could not give one definite answer to the question of the shape of the universe, its uh, finiteness or infinity in space. Friedman replaced the postulate of uh, stationarity of the universe with more general statements about the homogeneity and isotropy of the universe. In other words, that there are no distinguished regions or preferential directions of the universe. These ideas were expressed by the philosopher Nikolai Kozansky as far as back in the, in the 15th century. As a result, Friedman found new, quite definite solutions to the equations of the general theory of relativity in the form of three possible models of a non-stationary universe. The universe appeared to be expanding in one case from a point, in the other case, starting from some non-zero volume. The third model, represented a periodic universe. The radius of curvature of its space increased from zero to some value over time, which Friedman called the period of the world, and then again decreased to zero. The universe again shrank to a point, and so on. This variant was very reminiscent of ideas from the cosmological heritage of an ancient Indian philosophers. Recall uh, that prominent physicists and cosmologists, including Carl Sagan and Niels Bohr, admired 
Hindu cosmological concepts for their close resemblance in time periods to the standard cosmological model of the universe. According to Friedman, a stationary universe is impossible. There are possible cases when the universe shrinks to a point, to nothingness, and then again, from a point, brings its radius to some value. In 1927, independently of Friedman, the Belgian priest and scientist Lemaitre gave an estimate of the coefficient of dependence between the distance and the velocity of galaxies. Einstein wrote about Friedman's ideas in the essence of the theory of relativity as follows. His result then found a surprising confirmation in the Hubble's discovery of the expansion of the stellar system. What follows represents nothing more than an exposition of Friedman's idea. Yes, the theory of an expanding universe was confirmed experimentally thanks to a discovery by a famous American astronomer, Erden Hubble, while conducting observations on the largest telescope at the time of the redshift effect, which indicates the removal of galaxies from the observer. They move away from us the faster, the farther away they are located. In other words, the magnitude of redshift increase in wavelengths, decrease in frequencies of electromagnetic radiation of the source, which is manifested in the shift of spectral lines towards the red end of the spectrum, appeared to be proportional to the distance of the radiation source. Regarding the significance of decreasing or increasing the frequencies of vibrations, it's worth quoting an excerpt from the book, The Teachings of the Temple in which we find the following statement. It's necessary to realize that all manifested life is the result of movement and vibration, or the great breath. There is only one life in the realm of the real, and that is spirit. Matter, force, and consciousness are spirit in motion and vibration. The end of quote. As for Einstein's special theory of relativity, it doesn't consider the speed of removal the speed of removal increases infinitely with distance. Beyond a certain distance, called the Hubble distance, it exceeds the speed of light. This is not a violation of the theory of relativity, since the removal is not caused by motion in space, but by the expansion of space itself. Cosmological redshift observed for all distant sources, galaxies, quasars, decrease of emission frequencies indicating the dynamic distance of these sources from each other. And that means the expansion of the meter galaxy. The observed redshift from galaxies is also contributed uh, to by the cosmological redshift due to the expansion of universe space. At large distances, the contribution of the cosmological redshift becomes dominant. Since space is expanding, the observed region has a radius greater than 13.8 billion light years. It's equal to the current intrinsic distance to these objects due to the expansion of the universe and is 46 billion light years. The expansion of the universe, one of the fundamental concepts of modern science, still receives different interpretations. An inflating balloon is an old but good analogy for the expansion of the universe. The universe is expanding, but the bound objects in it are not doing so. Neighboring galaxies initially move away, but eventually their mutual attraction overpowers the expansion. An accumulation of such size as corresponds to its equilibrium state is formed. The Big Bang theory is based on an assumption that the physical universe was formed in a giant explosion when all the substance and energy of the present universe was concentrated into a single lump with a density of over 10 in 25th degree gram per, cent per uh, cubic centimeter and a temperature of over 10 in the 16th degree Kelvin. We're talking about singularity. 
the state of the universe at the initial moment of the Big Bang, characterized by the infinite density and temperature of substances. The model of the Big Bang was proposed in 1948 by our compatriot Georgi Gamov. It was from his theory that the concept of a hot universe entered science. The most important confirmation of the Big Bang theory is the detection of relic radiation associated with the existence of the initial super dense clot of substance and radiation. Penzias and Wilson received the Nobel Prize in 1968 for the detection in outer space of a substantial energy corresponding to the microwave region of the spectrum and a temperature of about 3.5 Kelvin. It looked as if the entire universe was permeated by this microwave background. It was the largest observational discovery in cosmology since Hubble discovered the phenomenon of galaxy scattering in 1929. The name relic radiation was introduced by the Russian astrophysicist Yosef Shklovsky. As the expansion continues, then according to the theory, the huge initial temperature has decreased by now to the average temperature of the universe, about minus 270 degrees Celsius. Relict radiation looks almost the same in all directions, which cannot be explained by theories other than the constant expansion of the universe. Many scientists believe that the universe underwent a short period of extremely rapid inflation in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang, rapidly swelling from subatomic size to several light years. The fundamental hypothesis of the inflationary model of the universe was the original conclusions of Erast Borisovich Glina. The theory developed the inflationary theory developed on the basis of these ideas by Gus and Linda from the US and Russia argue that the early universe, whose matter was in a vacuum like and at the same time, the time monstrously dense state, occupying a very small, close to zero volume, experienced a catastrophically rapid increase in its volume or inflation, inflating. In a time of 10 in 43 degree seconds, the universe reached its present size of 13.8 billion light years. Thanks to the theory of the hot universe of Gamov and the inflationary theory of Glina, Guth, Linda, the image of the universe as a non-linear, non-stationary and expanding universe was established in cosmology for a long time. Today, science is experiencing a serious conceptual crisis and a rethinking of some of its basic premises is required. This is also targeted by the current concept of the universe, where 73% of its composition comes from so-called dark energy. There are two options for explaining the essence of dark energy. Dark energy is a cosmological constant, an unchanging energy density uniformly filling space. And dark energy is a certain quintessence, a dynamic field, which energy density can change in space and time. Some of the proponents of the first case attribute dark energy to space itself or the vacuum. An alternative approach assumes that dark energy is a kind of particle-like excitations of some dynamical scalar field called the quintessence, or if you prefer, the fifth element. Our current understanding of the universe is mostly influenced by gravity, but nevertheless, scientists over the years have also considered alternatives to gravity. Much more role than gravitation is given to electromagnetic forces and plasma in the theory of the plasma universe. The following words belong to the American philosopher Chase, 
when I see a cow walking in a meadow, it's not a cow at all, but a frenzied dance of electrons. You can see the right train of thought in this metaphor. The basic idea of this theory, plasma theory, is that every astronomical body, including the sun, stars and galaxies, is the result of electrical processes. In the late 1960s, Nobel Prize winner Hans Alwyn proposed the first version, the plasma universe theory. The model assumes that the universe supports equal amounts of matter and antimatter. The boundaries of these two regions are marked by cosmic electromagnetic fields. Consequently, the interaction between matter and antimatter at the boundary of the regions leads to the formation of plasma. According to this theory, such plasma should form large patches of substance and antimatter throughout the universe. Another theory proposed in the 1990s by an Argentine physicist, Juan Maldacena, is the holographic universe theory. And according to it, all the information that makes up our three-dimensional reality and time is contained in a two-dimensional surface at its boundaries or horizon and is a projection of a deeper level of existence. As we know, a hologram is a way to record and reproduce a three-dimensional image using a two-dimensional surface. All information about the world in such a universe is written on negligible, minimal volumes of space-time, the so-called Planck cells. This implies that the universe in this case can be described in terms of information. Similarly, the Theosophical Doctrine is marked by similar conclusions. The seed, whether the seed of a plant, animal or human being, is the gateway between the two planes of matter. Every seed of the sun, star, planet, and therefore this world, contains a nucleus, and within that nucleus is the spark of eternal life, the father and mother, so to speak, of all life that can manifest in this world. The end of quotation. Good Linde's inflationary theory gradually developed into a much more general theory of the evolution of this entire conceivable material world, which represents the universe as a whole, as a giant growing fractal. fractal. We conclude our review of models of the universe with this theory, which brings us closer to the ideas appearing in the researchers of the Theosophical Doctrine, where we find the following words. Space is filled with myriads of stars and planets, as yet invisible to the human eye, since these stellar lives have not yet collected for external expression of the matter belonging to them. When the planet's or soul gains sufficient strength, it pulls from the cosmic matrix of the world, from the great asteroid and comet belts, and the graveyard of dead, destroyed worlds and deposits of new ones, the building material, or the matter. In 2008, an international group of astronomers from Italy and Russia analyzed data obtained by the Sloan Foundation's Digital Sky Survey Program. Finally, they came to the conclusion that there is no homogeneity of substance distribution in the universe. If these observations find reliable confirmation, it will lead to a revision of almost all cosmological models. As a result, scientists have concluded that matter in the universe is distributed in the form of a fractal. The process of continuous branching of such a cosmological fractal may have no beginning. For example, the existence of the fractal many-faced universe may be infinite. Density perturbations arise in the form of local bubbles, which generate new ones, and that can be visualized as a continuous vacuum boiling. Such a fractal universe cannot evolve. 
let us take into account that due to the equality of zero density of the fractal universe, the processes of contraction and expansion of MIGO galaxies and other cosmic macro systems cannot prevail over each other. And hence it follows that the evolution of the fractal universe as a whole is impossible. The results of local evolutions in cosmic macro systems, including organic and social forms of life, achieved during their expansion are destroyed by local processes of compression. Expanding and compressing meta galaxies in a fractal universe. These are the building blocks of almost the entire universe. This place is literally buzzing with life. Another thing is that the phenomenon that the phenomenon of life in such a universe, if of inevitability of local nature in terms of space and time. And in each bubble, a kind of mutations can occur and different physical laws can be formed. In the 21st century, we can observe a shift in modern cosmology from a multi-millennia old picture of a single all-encompassing universe to a paradigm of a many-faced universe, and it is gradually coming to the models of the universe that find frequent resonance in the theosophical doctrine. It's high time that other astrophysicists following Einstein would make the secret doctrine by Blavatsky their book that is always on their table. Thank you for your attention. Dear Sergei Vitalievich, you know, This was a concentrated flow of professional material based on historical facts, scientific research and confirmations, evidence, uh, figures is unique. I tried to follow your trail of thought and to apply that to Schleicher 11. Thank you so much. It is huge work. You've set significant goals before yourselves and you've implemented these goals. And I think that it is truly a unique material that clearly, accurately confirms various aspects that Blavatsky writes about in the comments in her secret doctrine. I think this is the synthesis that is important for studying the secret doctrine by Blavatsky. It's a new approach. It is a scientific approach. It is the future of studying the theosophical works, including the secret doctrine. Thank you for your approach, attitude, for identifying this synthetic uh, the synthesis in the scientific material uh, relying on the whole history of science. Uh, thank you for providing such an interesting presentation to all of us. I think that uh, for everyone who's going to watch this video, this recording, will be able to uncover new aspects for themselves. And uh, Sergei, uh, the facts that you mentioned, these are facets of this study and they are they uplift increase the importance of all the material that we've been working on for many years and this material enables us to have a new look at the secret doctrine by Blavatsky, there are stationary and non-stationary universes. These are three aspects responsible for the non-stationary universe can be the key factor, the key point for the whole scientific world related to the book by Blavatsky. I think we've witnessed a unique event. I congratulate you with such a successful presentation and report. I thank you for this lively dialogue. Thank you so much. Dear friends, I can see that we are receiving questions. I'd like to point out that all the questions you can leave in the Q&A uh, block in Zoom. We're receiving questions live. And at the end of the presentations of all the speakers, we'll 
uh, have time to answer each of your questions, dear friends. I'd like to present uh, the next speaker, Kishore Ongole, the Theosophic Society of India, Gundur, India. Thank you so much for finding time to join us. Mr. Kishore, we give you the floor. Thank you. Namaste. Today, this is the stanza three and sloka 11. Initially, we have to read what this stanza has given to us. It expands when the breath of fire is upon it, the father. It contracts when the breath of the mother, the root of the matter, touches it. Then the sons, the elements with their respective powers or intelligences, dissociate and scatter to return into their mother's bosom at the end of the great day and re-become one with her. When it is the web pulling, it becomes radiant. Its sons expand and contract through their own selves and hearts. They embrace infinitude. In the commentary, they, she has given some explanation for this. Great heat breaks up the compound elements and resolves the heavenly bodies into their primeval one element, explains the commentary. Once disintegrated into its primal constituent by getting within the attraction and reach of a focus or center of heat, of which many are carried about to and fro in space, a body, whether alive or dead, will be vaporized and held in the bosom of the mother until for had gathering a few of clusters of cosmic matter that is nebulae will by giving it an impulse set in motion anew develop the required heat and then leave it to follow its own new growth the expanding and contracting of the wife of the web that is the old stuff or autumn expresses here the pulsatory moment Pulsatory moment is the most important word. The paradox of heat. Contraction develops heat. It is true. But contraction from cooling is incapable of developing the whole amount of heat at any time existing in the mass or even of maintaining a body at a constant temperature. Next slide, etc. Professor R. Winston tries to reconcile the paradox, only a seeming one in fact, as conscious electricity, which is conscious electricity. Homer Lane's provide proved by suggesting something besides heat. May it not be, he asks. Next slide, please. Simply a repulsion among the molecules, which varies according to some law of the distance. But even this will be found irreconcilable unless this something besides heat is ticketed. Causeless heat, the breath of fire, the all creative force plus absolute intelligence, which physical science is not likely to accept. However, it may be the reading of this stanza shows it, notwithstanding its archaic phraseology to be more scientific than even modern science. Here we will understand a few words. Uh, please take the next slide. Next slide, please. In the Mandukya Upanishad, it is written, as a spider throws out and retracts its web as herbs spring up in the ground, so is the universe derived from the undecaying one. Next slide, next slide, please. Mun, the Mandukya Upanishad. As a spider throws out and retracts its web, as herbs spring up in the ground, so is the universe derived from the undecaying one. We will understand some of the words. Let us take Swabhavat. This word is the Sanskrit ablative case of the undeclined term. Swabhava, which should be the preferred spelling. Madam HBB explains as the name comes from Subhava. He is composed of three words. Two, 
means good, perfect, fair, handsome. Twa is self, and bhava is being, our state of being, the eternal and the uncreated self-existing substance, which produces all, while everything which is of its essence produces itself out of its own nature. That is Swa Bhava. Next, the breath of fire. Next slide, please. The breath of fire is the father. The spirit beyond the manifested nature is the fiery breath in its absolute unity. In the manifested universe, it is the central spiritual sun. Some call it as a serious star. The central spiritual sun is found by somebody as a serious star. The electric fire of all life. In our system, it is the visible sun, the spirit of nature, the terrestrial god. Sun is the terrestrial god for all of us. Next slide. There is heat internal and heat external in every atom. We all agree for that. Say the manuscript commentaries to which the writer has had access. Next slide. The breath of the father or spirit and the breath or heat of the mother matter. This is, there is internal heat and external heat. Now, what is cosmic electricity? Pohat hardens and scatters the seven brothers, Bhutri Jhan, which means that the primordial electrical entity for the Eastern occultists insists that electricity is an entity. It's a deva. Electrifies into life and separates primordial stuff or pre-genetic matter into atoms, themselves the source of all life and consciousness. Next slide. The mother's bosom is the place from where everything came and to which everything merges. Once disintegrated into its primary constituent by getting within the attraction and reach of a focus or center of a key, energy of which any are carried about to and fro in space, a body, whether alive or dead, will be vaporized and held in the bosom. Bosom of the bosom is the most important word. Bosom of the mother until Pohat, gathering a few of clusters of cosmic matter, will by giving it an impulse, set in motion anew, develop the required heat, and then leave it to follow its own new growth. The infinitude, the infinitude, here we have given the seven chains of earth stream. We will try to understand the chains of earth stream a little bit. The spirit of God moving on chaos was symbolized by every nation in the shape of a fiery serpent breathing fire and light upon the primordial waters until it had incubated cosmic matter and made it assume the annular shape of a serpent with its tail in its mouth. We can see the Theosophical Society symbol, which symbolizes not only eternity and infinitude. It is also the infinitude, but also the globular shape of all the bodies formed within the universe from that fiery mist. The universe, as well as the earth and man, cast off periodically serpent-like their old skins to assume new ones after a time of rest. Let us understand the earth chain and the scheme. We will see the slide. Earth planet has seven births, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and this is called one round. If seven rounds like this completes, it becomes chain. Then all the seven earth planets enter the Laya center. Then chain two starts. And then chain two enters into Laya. Chain three starts and enters into the Laya. Likewise, chain four starts and enters Laya. Likewise, it happens with the fifth, sixth, and seventh and completes one scheme of evolution. So seven into seven is equal to 49. So 49 is 49, we will say as 49 fires are there, 49 Marut Ganalu also there. Marut means Vayu. Air element. 
so you found you find uh, 49 fires and in air also there are 49 elements this is directly linked with our breathing inhale and exhale fire is consciousness next uh, slide please in the next slide we have shown adi anupadaka atma buddhi manomaya astral and physical in manomaya there is sarupa and arupa sarupa is form arupa is without form initially a ray comes from life principle god principle enters into adi and from adi to anupadaka and it descends to atma buddhi manomaya and kamamaya planes enter into stuna loka or physical plane the ray creates and activates all the atoms of planes this is what we call the first outpouring in the theosophical literature in hindu literature it is called brahma principle let us discuss only the planes after arupa then slowly descends into physical plane in each and every plane there are seven subdivisions total in 49 planes here we will discuss some tanmatra the tanmatra is the one of the best aspect when the creation has started here we have given the shiva consciousness is expressed in five tanmatras sound akasha tattva etheric element fifth one sparsha is touch vai tattva air element rupa form agni tattva fire element rasa liquid and water jala tattva water element ganda smell prithvi tattva earth element so as above so below these five tanmatras are linked with five elements shabdam sound linked with what we hear sparsha or touch or vayu tattva explains all the details about natural laws of air element first outpouring while descending creates seven types of atoms atoms of adi plane atoms of anupadaka and atoms linked with all planes these atoms pulsates to shabda sound sparsha touch rupa form rasa liquid form ganda tanmatra as a smell the third aspect all the atoms of all seven phases next comes the second aspect in ancient hindu wisdom it's called vishnu aspect it comes after shiva these three are one in general first outpouring second outpouring third outpouring are equal but they are and this is atri rushi a three means which is beyond three it is a atri is a sanskrit word but it is beyond three which is beyond three states brahma vishnu shiva and that is the goal of every human goal of every human is understanding what is beyond first second and third outpouring next slide this here we will see uh, the link to our body swasa or breathing is mind in arupa level here this statement should be understood deeply breathing is equal to thoughts ito form when the breathing stops the thinking man does not exist we are taking birth with the breath and dying after the stopping of breathing here we have given a table akasha two years shabda sound vayu pacha that is skin that is sparsha buddhi knowledge of touch agni is equal to two eyes rupa and sight chakshu buddhi knowledge of spirit jala is tikva the tongue rasa the taste rasana buddhi knowledge of taste Prithvi is NASA, 
Tanda, taste, grahana buddhi, knowledge of smell. This table is very important. This is as above, so below. This is micro and macro, think up of the universe and your body. Then mind is created, which is like second aspect. So if we go into deep understanding of the earth scheme in chain one, evolution of Atma to Sarupa plane created. In chain two, evolution of creation from Buddhi plane to Kama plane happened. So that is why this is called scientific age. As there are more scientific discoveries happening, from scientific age, we enter into the age of intuition and the age of wisdom. When science merges to spiritualism, everything is understood. Namaste. Mr. Kishore, thank you so much for familiarizing ourselves with one of the aspects of uh, the shloka of finding the connection with the previous shlokas and how they open up in shloka 11 oh, you gave us food for thought and of course this information is always very useful why it enables us to understand this air bio uh, it's needed for breathing, not only for physical breathing, but also for the heart breathing. Heart, as we know, breathes through the psychic energy, and it is the psychic energy that uh, composes the air of the heart. It is the non-stationary universe that Mr. Kolganov was talking about in his uh, presentation amazing presentation and this is the component that starting from shloka 9 with independent parts uh, of thoughts assimilates our understanding with accepting the psychic energy that will be present in uh, the following shlokas of stanza 3 dear friends we don't have much time left i'll try to be as brief as possible and um, present uh, our research made on Shloka 11, stanza 3. It spreads when the breath of fire is above it. It contracts when the mother's breath touches it. Then the sons separate and scatter in order to return to the bosom of the mother at the end of the great day, in order to reconnect with her. When it cools down, it becomes radiant. The suns unfold and contract by themselves and with their hearts. They contain infinity. Let's go step by step and look at each word. It. It's press. It is the fabric. Fabric or yarn is an externally ex uh, an eternally existing primordial substance. In our understanding, this is pure spirit, the material from which the objective universe or universes, all objective universes develop. The fabric is primordial substance, and it's the basis or form of future worlds or universes. Let's look at the sources that describe this fabric to understand better its beauty, its functions, and the ability to change. The fabric changes its structure. We can find the following names for this fabric. The first one is matrix matter. It is the basis of all the matter of the universe. This matter is an uncoupled substance, which can now be forward and its potentiality into forms by the creators. These are the creators of the creative work. Matrix matter, in other words, is the, is the basis of the whole universe. Why is it an uncoupled substance? Matrix matter is within itself 
and it has uh, all the forms of the spatial uh, energies. The next description of the fabric is materia lucida, or the luminous matter. It is the stage of manifestation of primary matter on the astral plane, yet available for research, according to Helena Rerich. This fabric is visible to the human eye with open energy centers in the form of luminous matter of various shades. It happens only when the energy centers are open, and they open in the form of luminous matter. It has various shades and tints. In other words, it's the matter from which the spirit builds its subtle bodies. Materia Lucida shows us how the spirit can build its subtle bodies. The spirit, this highest, subtlest energy, can build its bodies existing within materia or matter. With Logos, with the word, the spirit says, I am what the matter is, materia is. And it, with these shades, it can build its subtle body, spiritual body. So the body of the spirit has its own phases. If, and this is the analogy. If we are going to look at uh, comparisons, we'll see that the spirit in this aspect, in this lucida, materia in the energy centers of the matter that are full of light, the spirit builds its subtle bodies according to the analogy or uh, the analogy, the similarities of the properties of the thick matter, but it is becomes similar to the matter only when it eliminates it. And it does it like water eliminates fire. These notions that are given regarding the lucida materia tell us that the subtle body, the spiritual body, will be completely well, will be complete when the physical body is eliminated. Of course, we can all apply it to our own human body and draw a comparison. Material lucida or matrix matter. These are types of spatial energies that will one day be at the disposal of mankind. In the fifth race, we can use lucida materia, the subtle plane is so close and it correlates that many people start seeing auras, the lighting bodies, only when the humankind is ready, only then uh, these energies will be at the disposal of mankind. And the matrix matter will be available to us only when human beings or consciousness will be ready for it. But the apparatus that will be able to apply and use them will basically be the microcosm of man. This microcosm of man will be the conductor of the subtlest theory energies or the spirit that builds its subtle bodies. All Possibilities for this are concentrated in people, in the human body and its conductors, correspondingly. Materia matrix, or the primary matter, primary substance, or mula prakriti, akasha, is the subtlest, super sensible. It's a spiritual substance that permeates all space and is the primary garment of the spirit. This is the beautiful name, Materia Matrix. It's the primary clothing of the spirit. It's the subtlest 
a spiritual body is created by material matrix according to Rorick. This is the focus through which the radiations of the grain of the spirit are refracted and spread. The cup forms a triangle between the uh, sun uh, and the golden medium. This cup is this focus. These are three aspects of this non-stationary universe. This is the triangle between the heart and the solar plexus. This is the future grain, the future germ that will give motion uh, to this full comparison. Another fragment of another uh, fabric that we see is the asurgena. It's a synonym for the solar fabric connecting the earthly world with the divine, the cosmic garment of the spirit of the mother of the world, according to Agni Yoga. This is a beautiful description. According to theosophic sources and the thoughts of Shloka 11, stanza 3, we'll see that if this uh, solar garment of fabric starts manifesting, Shloka 11, the figure 11, manifests the sun, the spiritual sun, or the movement of the spiritual sun. This is swastika, this is the open face of Brahma, and this is the cycle of the sun itself, the threefold enlightened by the solar fabric at this period of the evolution of the universe. Those on Earth have centers that make it possible to penetrate into spiritual areas, but involution has disrobed humanity of some protective properties. Right now, we don't have these properties, but due to the fact that it's high time that we start to accept these energies and use them, they are sent by the ray of the mother of the world. What does it mean? It means that it's high time we started the evolution. It's the pivotal point of the fifth race, the fourth circle, the fourth sub-race. It is behind us. The fifth race, the fifth sub-race can start its evolution in the new energy. The key point, if the fabric or substance exists and has its phases and densifications of varieties of the pattern of eternity, which creates or forms worlds from a single state, it means that there exists something that creates these patterns of both sides of consciousness. This is the Father's breath. Loka 11. When the breath of fire or the Father over the yarn it expands or spreads. That is, as a subjective material, it is boundless, eternal and indestructible. The fabric spreads when the Father's breath is over it. It raises the question, what is the Father's breath? It is, is it the spirit or Narayana? This is the spirit or Narayana is Sanskrit someone moving over the waters of, of space. The title of Vishnu in his aspect of the Holy Spirit moving over the waters of creation. In esoteric symbolism, this means the primary manifestation of the principle of life spreading in infinite space. When this Narayana touch takes place, we can have a look at some of the compounds of this great notion. Narayana or Svayam Hava is a, a unique notion that is the self-existent being or self-existence, self-formation, Svayam Hava can also be read as Svech Hina, means meaning voluntarily of one's own free will, voluntar voluntary dissolution of individual consciousness in a state of bliss. The sun, Svayam Hava, or Svayam Hu, is a metaphysical and philosophical term 
meaning spontaneously self-generated or self-existent being. This is the epithet of Brahma. And uh, we can talk now about the cycle of this solar fabric, about this spiritual sun similarity and the open face of Brahma and the epithet of Brahma of the sun Swayam Hu. Swayam Hu is the name of the first Manu. It's also Swayam Hu Suryata, a spontaneous self-development, the very existence of the real in the unreal, that is the eternal sat in the periodic as sat. There is some link. The key point, the breath of the fire, father or the breath of fire is the period of the fiery nebula connecting the unreal and the real, the eternal and the periodic. The breath of fire, the breath of father, is this link, connection. But when the breath of the mother touches it, that is when the time comes for manifestation and it needs to become objective or to take shape. It contracts then because the objective material form cannot be unlimited. The key point, if Swayam Hava is the epithet of Brahma, then this is the first emanation or ray of Parabrahma, which changes the state of indestructible eternal infinite space. This is the building tool that can change this indestructible eternal infinite space. This is so powerful and this instrument exists. This tool is Svabhavat. Svabhavat is the universal substance and matter, or rather what stands behind it. There's the spirit behind it, an essence of substance. Svabhavat is the universal substance and matter. All nature comes from it and everything returns to it at the end of life cycles. In esotericism, it's called father mother. This is the plastic essence of matter. From Agni Yoga, we can read some of the notions that give the description. The cosmic fabric consists of all manifestations of psychic energy and is decorated with material lucida. In other words, this fabric is buried. The fabric of the best energies will be woven again. Matter is clothed in a radiant fabric of energy. Material cedar consists of the best manifestations of the psychic energy. The heart of a human being or their karmic movements that protect uh, uh, karma with the highest forces, powers. If we're talking about human beings, we can draw an analogy, material lucida, when it's clothed uh, in its radiant garment, it concentrates the best the psychic emanations, the best psychic energy. And by doing so, it becomes the highest power to pro that protects the karma of a human being. In the cosmogony of the ancients, cosmic matter, or primordial matter is identified as the symbol of water or clay as an analog of a plastic material from which the objective universe is created. It's uh, uh, the boiling clay, it's the primordial matter differentiated from chaos. It's like a vessel. It's the power that uses clay to create this form, this vessel for the future objective universes. When the first differentiation from chaos happens, then the fabric or yarn that consists of these threads, it consists of the material that directly builds or creates this very fabric. What is this building material at the time of the creation of the universe? This is the plastic world substance, Vabhavat. But how does this happen? And the comments by Blavatsky direct us to a study that we'll try to do right now. There's the innate force 
that always strives to unite with the essence that gave birth to it, which resides outside. This is a genius thought. On the inside, each of us has the innate force. Each of us has the innate force of love. It strives to unite with the essence that gave birth to it, to the spirit of the global substance that exists outside, resides outside, and therefore oh, what happens in Shloka 11 takes place. Mother causes the fabric to contract, and father induces the fabric to expand. This is the key point. We have two opposite forces, the expansion and the constriction. This is the eternal process of involution and evolution in the objective uh, worldview. The renewal of consciousness happens. How does it happen? The father is inside as a spirit. It induces uh, the fabric to expand, and mother, which is outside, uh, woves, uh, weaves uh, this fabric, and the fabric is the world substance, and this uh, body uh, turns into vapor and is preserved in the bosom of the mother. In ectoplasma, the dead and live bodies need to have one structure to turn into vapor. It's the pure uh, entity. It all happens while for heart, having collected several clumps of cosmic matter or nebula and given it an impulse, sets it in motion again and having developed the necessary warmth, allows it to follow its new growth. What does it mean? It's the for heart, the greatest law, this flow of the highest creative force, the creator of this creative force manifests individuality of each atom that later can be independent from other forces individually. It can follow its own growth. It can become a new. This is the creative potential within a human being, when humans can become creators of gods. The spread and contraction of the fabric is the pulse of motion, and the correct contraction and propagation of the infinite and boundless ocean, the noumenon of matters of Havat, generates a universal pulsation of atoms. This is the comparison the pulse of the atoms is the pulse of the universe, and at the same time, it's the pulse of the heart. The atom itself, or reflection of atoms, is a matter, it's the pulsation. The combination of spirit and matter creates atoms in their pulsation. What kind of pulsation are we talking about? We're talking about the pulsation of atom, the pulsation of a collection of atoms, of all atoms, or a particular matter. And then we move on to the human heart. It pulsates, it contracts and expands. And this is the fabric. The, the fabric consists of the pulsing highest matter that contracts and expands. It consists of this plastic essence. It is the spirit of matter. The pulsation comes from interaction of internal and external, and then the heat, internal and external in each atom, is the breath of the father spirit and the breath or warmth of the mother or matter. Losing heat, a gaseous body contracts and the amount of heat generated by compression exceeds the amount it must lose in order to produce compression. In other words, this is the paradox that is impossible to understand by the material objective consciousness. Our consciousness, to understand it, to understand that the amount of warmth exceeds the amount of warmth lost during compression. To understand it, we need to accept the psychic energy power 
the air, uh, the movement of heart. We need to accept the synthesis of non-stationary universe, the unmanifested higher aspects of the grain of spirit or the future germ. During contraction, the external fire turns into an internal fire, which is the heat that exceeds the amount of heat that must be lost in order to produce compression, which means that it happens during pulsation, contraction and cooling. And perhaps the internal fire transforms the inner fire into heat, independent for the propagation of its own new growth, which is life. When does it happen? It happens when it becomes independent. When it obtains independency, then the suns separate and scatter. They become independent. And in order to return to the bosom of the mother at the end of the great day, in order to reconnect with her, they separate and scatter. This inner heat makes this return possible, and that is why the return. The heart is cosmic electricity, granulation of primary matter. It's clumps, sparks, which in this form can already penetrate the dense layers of the Earth's atmosphere. These suns uh, scatter with the sparks, and they uh, enter the dense layers of the Earth's atmosphere, and when it cools, it becomes radiant. The suns unfold and contract by themselves and with their hearts. From inside to the outside, they contain infinity this way. They emanate this heat that exceeds the amount of heat that they lost during the contraction. That is how it happens. In other words, we have reached the seventh level. That's where uh, the form disappears completely. And there's nothing that can be set in motion. The acting force remains in solemn solitude, according to Blavatsky, and can perceive only itself. Or the inner merges with the outer, and this is the focus, the center. That's how it appears. The center of warmth is the zero point because they are spiritual. The breath of fire over it is over it, its presence scatters, and the breath of the mother or the root of matter touches it. It contracts and becomes a fetus, and it scatters until it disappears, until uh, the end of the great day uh, comes. The which is the union of spirits and matter. We can see the striving downwards, and it is the spirit of matter, and striving upward is the matter of the spirit. This is the great cosmic magnet. Man is also an atom, which is characterized by the forces of attraction and repulsion, a microcosm of the macrocosm. Having strength and intelligence, well, we can say that he is able to live and act independently of other human beings. Could or could he act and move at all if he didn't have power and intelligence behind him, even greater than his own, that is, those that allow him to live and move on this higher level of intelligence and strength? What enables human beings accept this state that is given uh, by something higher at the higher level of? his intelligence and strength. That is why Swayam Hava is the name of the first Manu. The first Manu is the higher level of intelligence and strength than that of a human being. When can that be perceived? When does it happen? And Blavatsky says that spiritual is to know yourself in the upper world, and material is to know yourself in the world below. These are the opposite forces that exchange. It's like an hourglass. It moves, striving downwards, and vice versa. 
the forces that used to be below in the world below are fulfilled with the spirit and then the the forces are in the upper world and give the power the forces so that what used to be in the upper world uh, can descend to the world below this is the great exchange for the higher good we are now looking at the form of the common good and when it cools when the divine free will establishes order and harmony in the world that is the great day of harmony and balance comes this is the day of harmony and free force of will which is unlimited and absolute it acts uh, um, it acts consciously since uh, it is the one and only the immutable law of life and being therefore the heart is considered only as a synthetic driving force of all bound life forces and an intermediary between the absolute and conditioned force this is the connecting link just as manas is uh, the connecting link between the gross matter of the physical body and the divine monad which animates it but cannot affect it directly monada influences the physical body only through manas and for hut is the vehicle of the law its representative and the representative of the manas putras which together can constitute the eternal mind in indian mythology there are 11 sons of brahma which are manasaputras and manasaputras are 11 sons of brahma and according to the indian mythology we can say that they appear in shloka 11 stanza 3 we can see the correspondence 11 and 11 manasaputras are born spiritually how does that happen when the divine free will becomes radiant or when the light becomes light or absolute darkness liar that's when the suns unfold with their bodies with their hearts they contain infinity and how does that happen they become the primordial light or absolute darkness that's how the beginning becomes the end and that's how the cross appears where liar is the center of warmth that's when the form disappears the active force remains in solemn solitude and according to Blavatsky the active force in in solemn solitude is the power of consciousness renewal which is what the fabric of Swabhavat is made of all the diversity existing in the objective world arises as a result of the peculiarities of the differentiation of matter which is influenced by a single free force with the help of that part of its essence which we call the bound force or material molecules the fabric begins to cool by itself without any external influence and when does it happen it happens when the bound force and mind pre present in every form of differentiated as well as homogeneous matter reach a point at which they both become slaves to a higher intelligent force whose purpose is to shape and guide them this is the power of divine of divine free will the bearers of which are the Hodhyani buddhas when the centrifugal and centripetal forces of life and being are subordinated to the single nameless force that organizes disorder and harmonizes chaos the cooling process begins each form according to a pattern inscribed for it in eternity and reflected in the divine mind the key point the sons or minds unfold and contract by themselves and their hearts they contain infinity as the heart becomes an infinite boundless space as the three have become one the one free force is the higher mind or the higher forces or Aum. Aum is the power of renewal of consciousness. Aum is the joy of the synthesis, the unification of all contradictions, the renewal of consciousness, one, one with the cosmos, one with nature, pillar of light, light, trinity in one. This is the ray unit or Atman. This is the Atman, the high spirit 
in man, which is conjunction in conjunction with Buddha and Manas, is called the upper triad or trinity. This triad, along with its four lower human principles, is also enveloped in an auric atmosphere like the yolk of an egg, the future embryo developed in albumen and shell. For the perceptions of higher beings from other realms, this transforms each individual into an oval sphere with more or less radiance. Alm is a symbol of the combination of higher energies. Alm is a prayer, and prayer can be compared in this aspect to a magnet only. The action of prayer tenses the heart and attracts the best thoughts from space. The best psychic energy is formed. Something other than heat will not be designated as causeless heat, breath of fire, all creative force plus absolute intelligence. The key point, the suns are minds that build the fabric by themselves. The fabric is their body, the form of the higher mind. When breath above, it is the state of the unmanifested mind. When the breath touches, there arises causeless heat. Then there is a contraction and spread. This is the pulse. This is how the heat, the heart beats, uh, which accommodates infinity by renewal of currents or consciousness. And conclusion, each impulse renews the fabric or consciousness, and this action is infinite. This is the all-creative force fused with the absolute mind. We can identify that it spreads when the breath of fire is above it. It contracts when the mother's breath touches it, then we can say about the all creative force that becomes one with the absolute mind when the uh, suns uh, uh, dis uh, scatter and separate. It happens when there is the expansion and the contraction it, uh, cools down, it becomes radiant, and that's when the suns uh, uh, become uh, infinite. Thank you so much. Uh, dear friends, I think that we've uh, run out of time. And uh, we can talk about and come back to Kalganov's uh, opinion about the universe that is not stationary and that the speed of light is not momentary. momentary. And now, when the stanza and Shloka 11 have come together, and reflected the light, we can say that the higher psychic energy is revealed by a thought, and thought is timeless. Strong Shloka 11 is a concentration of all the future unmanifested ideas in the radiant fabric you know, manifested by different aspects. Now it's time for a Q&A session, and I would like to give uh, the floor you know, for this person to provide his commentary to draw a conclusion on all the previous presentations and themes we've touched upon. We have a professor of art, a PhD in philosophy, Wong Han Hwang, from South Korea. So, Mr. Hwang, we want to your opinion. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it is good seminar about the uh, the formation of the universe and uh, the matters with, uh, you know, the high pressure and uh, uh, it has a uh, firing and uh, exploding uh, so far and uh, good explanations. Thank you very much. Okay, it is very helpful to me. Thank you very much. Да, большое спасибо. Да, Thank you very much. Dear friends, uh, at the meantime, Michelina Foster, uh, doctor of metaphysics from uh, the USA, California. Michelina, thank you for joining us today. Please provide your commentary on today's seminar, your opinion on this uh, Shloka 11, your you have discoveries from today's seminar, your opinion on the themes invoked by our speakers. I am having a lot of difficulty with unstable uh, connections here. So I'm, I'm missing quite a bit of what, was, of what was truly said. But what I did gather 
you're right on track with explaining it to the people. It's It's been a marvelous contribution, and I'm sure that many will grow from this information. Thank you. Thank you, dear Michelina. Thank you. Yes, uh, we've discussed uh, difficult concepts. The shloka is not an easy one, but thank you for joining us and having the ability to follow the ideas that were discussed. Vladimir Chernov is in the chat. If you're here, we want to hear you. So I uh, see that you've provided uh, different interesting topics and opinions and the merge between the physics, philosophy, esoterics, astrology. All different competences and aspects are necessary to understand the shloka. And what I would like to say when we when we were talking about returning to the bottom of the mother and the end of the great day when the suns are divided and scattered to return to the bottom of the mother, I see here this chain of seven planets. So when we go downwards from the upper position, when we go to the fourth planet, we have materialization, differentiation, the division, and our consciousness becomes more dense. We enter the realm of science. And now I can see that what's happening in reality, we are reaching the edge point of division between people, the conflicts all around the world are at their highest peak. But of course, different powers that were never seen before, the powers that can resist these conflicts. And for example, our, our country, Russia, you know, these powers were born here and they try to bring us together by religion, by the new ethics. Arhina Petrovna Blavatsky is in the avant-garde of this new rising system. And another point that I find interesting, if we take into account the previous shloka, I can see that there is a certain connection when we talk about the Fahat, which is called the, the creator. This is the divine thought in the had that was born in the first one is called the ego when it's born as the sense of uh, ego which is the end creation and uh, a great translation Branima, a master in the occidental studies when this when you understand this ability to conceive ego egoism the Mahat is transferred, transformed into menace or into the end point of God, which becomes the self. And we see this happening, this self, and uh, gets an upper hand in politics. And how do we save ourselves? We need to go towards the teachings of the Christ. So we need to discard the self, we need to invoke our higher self, we need to enter a new realm, a new quality of consciousness should be attained. And this is the sense of knowledge, this is the knowledge, wisdom, science, and spiritual development, the moral elevation. Uh, and when Nikodem has asked his teacher, how do we, how does love reflect itself in the bosom of the mother. How does we, their consciousness get reborn in the new quality? So the shift to the fifth phrase, when we go back to the bosom of the mother, when we have already attained the knowledge we wanted, the intellect, when science achieves uh, the highest results, now sometimes there are fantastical discoveries happening in science, for example, the AI, drones, and etc. And this combat, combat for the lost spirituality is uh, the old world is being replaced by this idea that we need to go back to spirituality. 
and we need to move forward in order to save the civilization, to save the world, and to go into the fixed race. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chernov. Thank you for joining us and you're sharing your opinion. I wanted to uh, add a comment about the bottom of the mother, you know, judging by the evolution that has happened before the differentiation of uh, local 11 stands and free. The signs that were unfolded and scattered and divided by in the sparks, they are the consciousness that are multiple in all the cycles, the cycles of Mahaman Vantara, because this is a great day. And once the Mahaman Vantara comes to an end and comes an extra layer, they will merge in the bosom of the mother once again, all together. This is just all about the cycles. And uh, this is like an impulse. And you task that is being given to the fifth race and the main impulse will be given to the sixth and the seventh and the new spur of evolution will begin. We have uh, some questions. Unfortunately, we won't be able to answer them all now, but I still would like to start with the first question. At what principles of forehead uh, merges together the different scrubs because you know forehead it cannot chaotically you know merge together all the crumbs there needs to be a certain a certain order so at what principle forehead merges together the skirts of the cosmic matter mr huang please answer this question if you understand it correctly uh, i'm saying about the uh the principle of the buddhism it the key uh, the key is the five skandhas if we understand the five skandhas uh, we freely i mean uh, enough uh, understanding the the buddhism that's very uh, complicated and uh, uh, you know difficult to understand the five skandhas uh, but uh, today, uh, Mr. Ongol uh, told about the, the basic about the uh, uh, skandhas. Uh, please, if you possible, uh, say about the uh, relation five skandhas and uh, you're speaking today uh, with one, one sentence, please, possible. Do you have any good? explanation with one sentence uh, mr on goal please hey, I, I don't know uh, dear friends uh, let's uh, give an explanation and how forehead purges uh, different curates of the universe. Kishore uh, Angoli, please, this question comes to you. How forehead, uh, you know, takes in different curates of the cosmic universe? I, I mean, do you understand, do you know about the uh, five skandhas in Buddhism? Uh, maybe you don't know about the Buddhism, but uh, probably next time, please, if possible, you have a Please provide a seminar for that uh, five scandals uh, relation relate, relate to the today's speeches. Please, it is very important. Uh, uh, nobody can do that because you are you are, you are birth of uh, India. Uh, yeah, Mr. You... Huang. Thank you very much. Yes, Mr. Huang, we have taken that into account. Uh, we will, you know, the five. Uh, Principles, the five principles, the five steps of forehead, the five planes of existence, or the five uh, organs of perception of the world. Uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Huang. Uh, Mr. Angoli, do you have uh, any comments about the principle, the forehead uh, merges the curves of the cosmic energy? Uh, I have stated the five parmatras. 
the five elements that is the information right now i have the akasha the vayu agni jala prithvi that is uh, five elements air uh, earth water fire and uh, air and ether akasha these five elements are tanmatras as uh, as I explained here for hat uses these five tanmatras for the creation that is the information i have thank you okay thank you Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Vladimir Chernov, do you have anything to add about the forehead and how it, and how it collects the turrets of cosmic matter? So forehead is the unity of the material and spiritual. So sometimes we compare them. But of course, there's no comparison. And for example, in the Marxist theory, the material theory is relatively true. Material, the material that exists without the spirit, and the spirit exists without the material. But the unity of the material and the spiritual is the forehead. And what unites them is the movement, the energy of the movement, which is born through the conflict of the material and spiritual. And if we talk about the Christianity, the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son, the third element that unites them together is the forehead. So this is the basis of the evolution of movement and the order, the law of the being. They are all reflected from forehead. And it unites the law, the law of manifestation in the universe because it manifests itself through the unity of the spiritual and material base. And Hegel, he has talked about, he talked about the synthesis. We can compare uh, forehead to synthesis, to Hegel's synthesis and antithesis. Okay, thank you very much for your addition. With the only question we have for today, the pertinent question we are discussing. Right now, our colleagues have tried to answer what is forehead. But the question is not what is forehead, because I think we have already talked about this extensively during our previous seminars. The question is what principle is at play when forehead collects the curves in the cosmic universe. Vladimir Yari will try to answer this question. Well, humans of the first elements, I'd say in accordance with all the humans of the first elements, uh, they collect this fire mist and they collect this forehead, the creative power, that's all. Well, well, we can say that, as we know, forehead is, uh, is a symbol of psychic energy, and it pierces, and when it disappears, all borders dissolve the borders between the manifested and unmanifested, between the spiritual and material, life and death. Because atoms which begin to manifest themselves as individual sources of life, they get a new urge of life, a new expansion. Why? Because there is a new state of being and the continuous consciousness. So this is the principle which is used by the forehead when it collects the curse of cosmic matter to provide this consciousness with individual life, with continuous creative power. This is the unlimited world or the multiple universes which have their own evolution and we are in the fourth 
circle of the evolution, which is limited by the fifth race and the fifth sub-race. And this forehesic spiral movement, which is one of the principles, I mean, we know the spirit movement in the spiral, because the spiral movement, it always goes upwards and it always connects the up and down. This is the power that brings together this power. So, my dear friends, the 11th shloka of the manif that manifests the spiritual sun, the aspect of the movement of uh, the sun rays of all the universes is an aggregate of the potential psychic energy that will be a mediator between the world and the fin the plane. So this is the point at which the thought doesn't need time anymore. This is the spark of psychic energy that has its own future potential atoms or forms of objects which, that will develop into a new life form. And if each person would understand and accept this idea of their personal growth, not depending on any you know, outer circumstances or hurdles, just driven by the inner energy and the continuous thought, the, this pure consciousness, the pure ideas. At this point, we would be able to all hold this unlimitedness within us and to bring our hearts together. So at this point, I would like to draw a conclusion to our today's seminar. This is an interesting shloka. Thank you all very much for joining us today. Mr. Lina Foster, uh, Mr. Hwam, Mr. Chernov, uh, Mr. Kalganov, Kishorian Gule, Vladimir Afirovich Yari, the representative of the Theosophical Law School. So all of those different aspects that we'll discuss today, we have all woven the fabric today. And if you have experienced happiness today, because happiness is the reflection of life, if you felt this joy, this fascination, then you have understood the hearts of others. And then this seminar will continue to live on and to expand the atoms by their own individual understanding and perception. And each each one of you that follows the idea of the evolution of the universe in the secret doctrine of Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. The final word goes to Vladimir Yari. Today is the 24th of February. 2024, we can say that we will work behind the shield, and today is the day of the senior. The will shows the fire essence of the element, and it symbolizes the beginning of the new step. So I congratulate you on working together behind the shield of the senior. And, uh, no, the greatness of the teacher and uh, the ability of the student to learn is very important. So thank you very much for joining us. Our next seminar will be on the 14th of March. We will continue to study the secret doctrine, which allows us to understand the high world, which is protected by the laws of karma. A great idea, a great thing that will be discussed in the further shlokas of that. Thank you, light and love. Thank you to our interpreters, to our technical team for their great work on today's seminar. We are so happy that Despite all the hurdles that may have a reason, you were able to connect and to express your opinions. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again. Thank you for your reactions, your likes, and for staying with us. Goodbye.